Hello and welcome to this video on cells. We're going to start off by talking about animal and plant cells and first of all let's discuss the things they've got in common. So you'll probably remember a lot of these names from doing it in key stage three and some may be new to you. But first of all both of them have a nucleus. And the role of the nucleus is con to control the cell's activities. It is also where um, the DNA is stored in the chromosomes inside the nucleus. The next thing they've got in common is the jelly-like substance um, in the cell, which is cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, this is where chemical reactions occur. Another thing they've got in common is a cell membrane. Now the cell membrane is the inner membrane here on the plant cell and the only membrane here on the animal cell. And the cell membrane um, controls what goes in and out of the cell. A couple of other things they've got in common um, is something called the mitochondria, which may be new to some people, and there's several mitochondria throughout the cell and the same for the plant cell so these here are the mitochondria and in the mitochondria this is where respiration takes place so both plants and sorry, both plants and animal cells respire, um, and this and where respiration happens is inside of these mitochondria here. So this is where respiration takes place. And the final thing that they've got in common is something called the ribosomes. So throughout um, the cell, again, there'll be several of them, will be these ribosomes. They might be drawn slightly differently in exams, maybe just little dots for the ribosomes like this, but nevertheless, they are something in common to both cells. So these ribosomes here, are found in both um, animal and plant cells um, because they're important in making proteins. So as well as making proteins, you might hear the word protein synthesis. It means the same thing, it just means to make proteins. So this is where protein synthesis occurs because both animals and plants need to make proteins to be able to grow and repair themselves and so on. Now there's a few things that the plants have got extra to the animal cells. First of all, the obvious one is the fact that it's got this second line going around the outside. This is the plant's cell wall. It doesn't exist in an animal cell, but this here is the cell wall. And the cell wall provides support. Because unlike the animals, which will have a muscular and skeletal system to provide that support, plants don't have that. So they have this cell wall, which is full of cellulose, which gives the cell a more rigid structure and provides that extra support for it. And these parts that we've mentioned so far um, would 
also be applicable for an algal cell or algae as it's known in plural okay so a cell with a cell wall cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria ribosomes um, in an algal cell but plant cells have a, a few more bits as well they have a vacuole in the middle and this is filled with cell sap So this is filled with like sugars and things like that, which we call cell sap. And this also works to, to give the cell shape and um, structure to it as well. Because when this is full up with cell sap, it allows the shell to the cell, sorry, to keep its shape. So also, let's add it on here, helps keep the cells shape. And finally, a really important thing for plant cells is these chloroplasts, which I'm going to draw as green for a reason. So chloroplasts. And this is where the process photosynthesis occurs. put it in so I'll go down there where photosynthesis occurs and the chloroplasts themselves are filled with a green pigment called chlorophyll that's why we draw them as green so they're filled with chlorophyll which is p-h-y-l-l -L, all, all one word chlorophyll and this is what helps to absorb the sunlight for photosynthesis to happen so these are the basic components of animal and plant cells. Um, unfortunately, it's a case of trying to commit these to memory, perhaps putting a poster on your wall to try and remember all the names and what they do, remembering which um, parts are both in animal and plant cells and which ones are only for plant cells. So we've discussed the basics of animal and plant cells, but it's important to say now that not all animal and plant cells look exactly like we've just drawn them on the other side. Um, that's just the basic representation of them. There are um, specialised cells, as we call them. Where the cells have a specific shape or specific components to do their function. For example, on the animal side, um, you have red blood cells as an example of a specialised cell cell and these red blood cells um, want to carry as much ox oxygen as they can so to allow them to carry as much oxygen as they can they have no nucleus so they're still animal cells but they have no nucleus and also they have that smooth donut shape to allow them par to pass easily through blood capillaries also in animal cells you've got things like the sperm and the egg cell the egg cell being a lot larger than the sperm and containing large amounts of food reserves for the developing embryo. And then the sperm cell, which obviously has the, its um, tail for um, mobility, so allowing it to move um, up towards the egg and also in the head it has protein digesting enzymes to allow it to enter into the egg and it is also full of loads of mitochondria to allow it to respire um, a lot because it's wanting to be moving fast um, up towards the egg. So obviously they don't look like the animal cells we've just drawn. They're just a few examples of specialised cells um, which are particularly shaped to do their function. And similarly, plant cells have specialised cells. For example, you'd have a um, palisade cell, which comes up later on in the topic as well. 
which is a leaf cell and because it's a leaf cell this cell is particularly um, packed with chloroplasts it'll still look very similar to what we've drawn it'll have all the other components but it will have loads of these chloroplasts as well still going to have the nucleus and the ribosomes and the mitochondria and all of that in there but it's just packed full of um, chloroplast because its main function is to perform th photosynthesis so because it's in the leaf in the leaf it is full of chloroplasts loads of chloroplasts to allow it to do lots of photosynthesis on the other hand you might have a root hair cell in the root which will look a little something like this it's going to have here a large surface area for um, absorption of water or absorption of minerals and inside there's no point having chloroplast because it's going to be underground so the root hair cell on the other hand is going to have no chloroplasts because it's not going to be anywhere where it's going to be able to absorb any sunlight so there's no importance for this cell to have chloroplasts instead it's going to concentrate on being a very specific shape to absorb water and minerals from the ground um, another example of these is something like the guard cells which are um, around the stomata which is the opening in the bottom of the leaf and these um, guard cells have that very specific kidney shaped um, to allow this stomata here in the bottom of the leaf to be able to be opened or closed so these guard cells look nothing like that rectangular structure that we drew before they are a specific shape to be able to open and close and perform their function okay here we have um, uh, two further cells that we need to know for um, our exams and they are the yeast cells and our bacterial cells now both of these um, are single celled organisms and the yeast here looks quite similar to an animal cell how we draw an animal cell but it has obviously a cell wall which the animal cells don't so if you see a kind of circular structure with a cell wall then that is going to be a yeast cell it still has um, a nucleus to control the cell activity the cytoplasm in the middle where the chemical reactions occur and it also has the cell membrane to allow substances in and out of the cell as well. For the bacterial cell you will have again a cell wall which will help you distinguish it from um, an animal cell. This again is a single celled organism. I've drawn it in the same colours as, as I did the plant cell but it's by no means a plant or any relation to a plant. Um, but they do have this uh, cell wall around the outside and again a cell membrane but the distinguishable feature about a bacterial cell is it has no nucleus so these have no nucleus they still have DNA um, controlling the cells activities but that is often either loose so you'll see DNA like this or you might see so the DNA might be like that or you might see something called a plasmid in there that's what people get confused with the nucleus if they see that they think that's the nucleus but it's not it's um, a ring of DNA which we call a plasmid so it's just a loop of DNA you might have seen these before in genetic engineering when you can actually cut a bit of um, DNA out and replace it with something that you want the bacteria to produce for you like insulin or something like that you can put the insulin gene in that plasmid and get the bacteria to produce it so that's the distinguishing feature about the bacterial cell the fact that they have no nucleus 
They sometimes might have um, some sort of flagellum on here for motility as well to allow them to move, um, but not all of the time. The main thing is that the bacterial cells have no nucleus. So that's your summary on cells. We've gone through animal cells, plant cells, how they can be specialised, and finally two extra types of cells which are yeast cells and bacterial cells which are both examples of single-celled organisms. If you found this video useful then please like and subscribe for further videos.